Psalms chapter 122, a song of degrees of David. And you, when they give you a name of who's writing, gives you a, a time frame. Because I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It's not the temple. Solomon builds the temple. And this would probably be the case if it's talking about Jerusalem after David brings the ark. You know, when Uriah there is killed, when he touches it, and he puts it off, and he brings it into the city with joy and gladness and dancing, right, with the priest carrying it. And he, and he puts it among its uh, tabernacle made by David. That would be the gathering. And I know a lot of people use this verse, you know, the church. The church ain't a house. It's just a building. The church is people. But people always get confused with material things. Listen, when the, when the rapture happens, the church buildings ain't going. The people are going. All the church buildings will be here for the Antichrist to be used. <clears throat> Our feet, the Jewish feet, I'll show you at the end of this verse, shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. And what you're going to find in Psalm 122 is not today. They're not standing in Jerusalem firm. Listen to the, where the temple was, where David set the ark, finally. There's, there's the Temple Mount. They took Jesus outside of Jerusalem and had him crucified. And Titus in 70 A.D. destroyed the city. Jerusalem is builded as a city that is compact together, united, established city. When David and Solomon had Jerusalem, it was settled. It was where it was supposed to be. It was to God's glory. That was the mountain peak of Jerusalem. And then from there it went downhill with Solomon and his thousand wives and, and worshiping other gods. Today it, it's it's broken up. You got uh, Roman Catholics running around charging people to see things that are not true. I mean, if they li if they lie about the Bible and lie about their religious customs and practices. Why would you trust him about the city of Jerusalem? Whether the tribes go up, the 12 tribes, the tribe of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. They were to go there to the males three times a year and give thanks to the Lord. And as a result of that, God would give the land peace that no one would desire the land while they go into Jerusalem. Their families would be protected while the men were away. For there are set thrones in judgment, the thrones of the house of David. And if you check Deuteronomy 17.8 and 2 Chronicles 19.8, this would be the Supreme Court. You laugh at the Supreme Court of America. This is where in the land of Israel, if there was controversy and judgment that the judges could not figure out. The law in Deuteronomy 17.8 said you're to go to Jerusalem and you're to seek God there over the controversy. So there would be some court cases that God would allow a, a priest, which was the judge, the judge was the priest, to say to have no light, bringing to order, I use that word according to sentence, according to law, to go to God in Jerusalem to get the answer. So if you were up in Dan or as far as Bar, Bar, Bathsheba, 
If you really wanted a court case to be settled out, would you travel to God? See the Old Testament? Travel to God in Jerusalem. You're not talking about modern age here. You get in the car, turn the ignition on, drive 65 miles per hour, and there you are. <laughs> You're talking about walking or animals, being an animal, a horse or camel. Taking an airplane, maybe. When you went to seek God for trouble in your life. Oh, we don't do that today. Listen, we have a Supreme Court, Paul says, right in the church house. You find uh, the, the, the lowest one in the church to be the judge of the, of the matter. You're to seek God on things that trouble your life in judgment. You're to ask God as judgment. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And that's a proper prayer. Uh, Paul says pray for Israel. Listen, the peace in Jerusalem is going to be Jesus Christ sitting on the throne. There is no peace, saith the Lord, to the wicked. They shall prosper that love thee. There will come in a day when there will be peace in Jerusalem and, listen, the prosperity they're going to get. When you read about what the millennium is going to be like and the curse removed, that's going to be prosperity. Listen, under the curse, you can plant a grapevine and look at all the grapes you get under the curse. Imagine what that grapevine will produce when the curse is removed. Can you imagine what those grapes will taste like when the curse is removed? Can you imagine what the juiciness of those grapes are going to be when the curse is removed? Peace be within thy walls. That is not today, especially today, right now, present. But they're having a battle over there right now with Hamas. And there's been one piece of land that keeps fighting over, fighting over, fighting over. It's either it's either Jerusalem, it's, it's Iraq, which was Babylon. Well, how many wars have been in, in Babylon and in, in, in Israel? And prosperity within, within, within thy palaces. So when Jesus Christ came on the scene, who was living in the palaces? The high priest. Doesn't it say that when they had taken Jesus to the palace, Peter went outside and was... Had they trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior, they would have been in prosperity... It would have been that seven years somehow, that tribulation, and then, boom, he had gone right in the millennium. But they rejected him. For my brethren, Jews, and companions' sakes, I will now say, peace be within me. David was a man of war. That guy fought before he had the throne and after he had the throne. The only one that had the peace was his son Solomon. He didn't have peace in Jerusalem. When he didn't go to war and he's walking on his rooftop, his army's off fighting a war. And as a result of that sin... His own son usurps the authority of, this, of the kingdom. And they go to battle. <coughs> Got to be a prophecy. Even Solomon had to usurp authority. 
with Jeroboam and a few others the Lord sent to, to Solomon because of his sin. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. That house of the, of the Lord in the Old Testament was to be the center of all the world. The center of the Jews. The resting place of God. Yes, there would have been in the Old Testament a place where God said, that is where I am. And if you want me, you come here. And the Jewish people would be the lights and the witnesses. I guess you would call them the Jehovah Witnesses. If somebody's already taken that name. And you realize if the Jews have done right in the Old Testament and obeyed the laws and and done everything that God wanted them to do. God would have sent them out from Jerusalem to Samaria. The outer parts of the world. As Jehovah's Witnesses. And they would have eventually made their way. Instead of a European over to Americas. And found the Indians. Or excuse me Native Americans. They would have found all the Americans. The both uh, North, Central and South Americans. And they were to guide them to a way to that, that brings them to their temple that's set up on a mountain, which would have been higher than all the other gods and, and things to be. That if you wanted the true God, you were to go to this place called Jerusalem. And their God would be, and there would be all his people the apple of his eye, the little group of people called Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the twelve tribes would have been there to show you what you needed to do, how you needed to do it, and there is God. But there's a problem. There's a big problem. You made your way to Jerusalem. You climb the mountain to Jerusalem. You come to where the tabernacle is. You come to the door. Hey, I want to come see God. You're a sinner. Yes, I know I'm a sinner. The, uh, the book says, where's your animal sacrifice? My what? You need to bring a sacrifice because you're a sinner. Oh, okay. Where do I get one? Get them over there. All right, go over there and get an animal. Okay, here's my animal, and this is the sins I've done. All right, you put your you put your hands on this animal and you kill him. I do what? You got to. The Bible said that that you lay your hands on the animal and you slay it there by the altar. He's cute. I don't care. He's cute. Slay him. Wow. My wife who loves the animals, Peter, you ain't going to like this, but okay, this is how I get to God. I'm going to slay the animal. And they do everything they have to do, and they put it on the brazen altar. And, he, and the guy starts walking westward. Oh, 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 where are you going? Well, I did my sacrifice of going over that water thing over there. I guess I watched. Oh, no, 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 no. Stop! You can't go no further. Wait a minute. I brought my animal. I've sacrificed it. I confessed my sin. I want to go in. I want to go see that God. Uzza. King Uzza, what are you doing in this building? I'm offering sacrifices. You better get your butt out of here. You better get your butt out of here right now. Don't you tell me what to do. I'm the king. What's that we see in your forehead? Oh my, you got leprosy. Get him out of here. Put him in a separate house now. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I travel all this way to come to God. Here he is. And, and I can only go far as he brays an altar? You mean I can't go into the, the holy place and and have a, have some bread? 
burn some incense, make the place smell good, and then walk through that other, no, you couldn't. No, you can't. No, you won't. Man, you stop at that brazen altar. Imagine the Cherokees or the Sioux Nation or, or any other Indian tribe or Native American tribes, Aztecs. Imagine them coming all the way to Jerusalem and they get stopped at the brazen altar. That's it. That's the Old Testament. And I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And you, you had to bring an offering. You had to give of yourself. See, Christians just quote these verses and they don't realize what the verses are. It's a long journey. Jerusalem's up on a mountain. I should have looked it up and found out how high that mountain was. I didn't look it up. Today, you know, we get up on Sunday morning and, and we get the kids all dressed up and we got to find the car keys, got to find our Bibles and that. Can you imagine when, it, when when you're looking at David's time in Psalm 20, 122? All right, you had to get all the kids. You had to get all the animals. And you didn't put them in a pickup truck or a tractor trailer. You walked. How hard was that? Joseph, honey? Yes, dear. Have you seen Jesus? No, oh, I thought you had him. I don't have him. Man, your Aunt Ruth has him. Aunt Ruth, did you have Jesus? Hey, you guys want to get those sheep that are going away now? You want to go get it? go get those sheep over there? I don't know. Where is Jesus? I have no idea. This looks like a nice little place to camp down. It's got water and stuff like that. You know what? We're going to have to pack up and go back to Jerusalem because we don't have Jesus here. And you think it was just easy just pack everything up, turn around, head back to Jerusalem. It took them three days, I think it said. Or at the end of three days, they found Jesus in the temple. And in verse 5, you gotta, you're going to Jerusalem just to be judged. Listen, if you go to the Supreme Court today, I would assume you don't even have to go, that the, your lawyers will do all the paperwork and, you know, the paperwork sent off how it was done. But if you had to go to Washington, D.C. for the Supreme Court, you could take a plane, train, automobile, helicopter. And it's not like this in, in, in the Old Testament. And if you're going to seek God, I'm trying to say is you get stopped at the brazen altar and that's it. See you next time you sin. Where today when you're in the church age, you are under grace and I am the church. Paul says, I am seated in heavenly places. I am there with God. The veil, the, temp the temple has been ripped from God to man. I, where do these religions get these pilgrimages? Pilgr the Hindu and the, and the Islam and all that. And they got to go to these mountains. They get it from the Bible. I don't have to do that. I don't have to go to Jerusalem. I am already, I have passed the brazen altar. I'm not going to hell. Jesus Christ was the Lamb of God that take away the sin of the world. I have been washed by the word. I have been at that, at that, at that brazen altar of cleanness. I have went through the first veil. I've got the six and six, 66 books on my table. I have got the light of John chapter 1. In Revelation, I have offered the prayers of incense. And at the prophecy of John the Baptist and the Lord Jesus Christ, we see man, he's at the incense altar, and he can't even get any further than that. 
I have now passed the incense author. I have asked Jesus Christ to save me. I have believed with my heart. I have confessed with my mouth. I, hey, where's the curtain? There is the ark. There is God's holy seat. There are the cherubim. I don't have to open nothing because it has been ripped. There I am seated. Now you go tell a Jew, this is the stumbling block. You go tell a Jew witnessing, I am right there at the mercy seat. No Jew ever saw that. But the high priest, once a year, he went in there twice. One for his sins and one for the, the sins of the people. That was it. Nobody ever went in that, that holy place. I wonder if they even saw it when they built it when Moses time. I want probably was it was supposed to be covered when they when they carried it. You go back and check that the, the curtains that covered the whole the tabernacle were to be covering all the instruments. They didn't even see the table. They didn't even see the, the candlestick. It was all covered with the curtains. The ark was covered with the curtains. No one ever saw that. And 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 Indiana Jones is going out to find the, the Ark of the Covenant. It is gone. I know where it is. It's in heaven, the book of Revelation, and there I am looking at it. And since Indiana Jones is a liar, because there is no Indiana Jones, unless he believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, Mr. Ford, you will never see that ark. Unless you come to Jesus. See, the Old Testament Jew, when he came to the brazen altar, he brought his sacrifice. He went no further. And when he died, he went to Abraham's bosom. He didn't go to heaven. He didn't go into the holy place. He went to Abraham's bosom. Only when Jesus Christ himself walked into the sacrificial land, was slain, and laid himself on the fire. Don't you tell me that Jesus didn't go to hell. What? The sacrificial lamb died at the brazen over and hopped out of, out of it and then get burned? You didn't read your Bible. The Lamb of God which take away the sins of the world. The Lamb of God that, that, that passed over a night. You're the what? Roast it with what? You're to roast it with fire. That's why they kept saying, that's why you see in the gospel, they went up to Jerusalem. They went up from Jerusalem. Wait a minute, how can he go up from Jerusalem? They were up north. They come down. No, Jerusalem's a mountain. It took a lot of work to get to Jerusalem. To the holy place, which they never got to. Me to get to the holy place is by the finished work of the merit of the Lord Jesus Christ outside of nothing. I didn't do nothing. I didn't have to go nowhere. I didn't have to walk nowhere. I didn't have to drive nowhere. I am in the most holy place by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. And I don't have to bring animals. Now. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go in the house of the Lord. Uh, okay, when I gather together with a bunch of Christians together to serve the Lord, you should be glad. Snooze, oh man, he's going to preach about, oh, that's not what. Oh, go give my money. No, God says I want a cheerful giver. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Well, let's jump, let's jump ahead. After the second advent, Lord Jesus Christ, when we come back after, and we're going to be planning in Jerusalem. Listen, I don't need to go to Jerusalem for no holy uh, crusade or anything like that, or a holy land tour. I'm going to be in the holy land when it's holy under Jesus Christ. 
I go over there today, I may get hit by a missile and come back in a box. Oh, box. <laughs> Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. When I come back, Jerusalem is going to be built. There will be the, t the temple there. I go over there today. There is no temple. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, that time you will know who the tribes of Israel are. They'll be back. And you'll have a Levitical police, priesthood set up too. Unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. You're going to see Israel doing what they're supposed to be doing for the Lord. For there are there are set thrones of judgment. Jesus said that the, the 12 apostles are going to be seated on thrones judging. At the great white throne of judgment, the Bible says, I am going to judge angels. The thrones of the house of David. The thrones? What thrones? The throne of the Lord Jesus Christ sitting on David's throne. And David the prince will have a throne. Wow. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for it. You know, you know what you do when you pray for the peace of Jerusalem? You're asking Jesus Christ to come and rapture his church out. Because there can be no peace first unless the church is gone. And you've got the seven years of tribulation. Then comes the peace of Jerusalem when Jesus Christ comes back on horseback and cleans out the nations that hated and the nations that rejected him. And then he cleans the place up by removing the curse and he sits down and there he is on David's throne and there is peace. You are to pray for the Jews. They shall prosper that love thee. If they don't love Jesus, they're going to cast into the lake of fire that burns right there. They'll jump in the lake. Peace be within thy walls under the Lord Jesus Christ. The walls will be there and prosperity within palaces. There will be palaces in the millennium. For my brethren, the Jews, and companion sakes, those who are Gentiles who do what they're supposed to do. There is Jew and Gentiles. Companions with the Jews. You don't dare mess with it. Listen, Jesus Christ will have more power and authority than the United Nuts in New York has. I will now say, peace be with, within me. Now say, present tense, yet in the future. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek thy good. Thy good. So a man comes up to Jesus one time and he says, he calls him good master. And Jesus says, why well, call me good? There's none good but God. And a lot of people fumble and scrumble over that. And Well, I guarantee when you come up to Jesus Christ in the millennium as he's sitting on the throne, I guarantee if you come up and say good master, I guarantee he won't rebuke you for it, okay? You can't say that about any human being because the Bible says there is none good, no, not one. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And God, Jesus Christ, who is God, and God is Jesus Christ, he has to be good because he hasn't sinned. So Psalm 122, if you want to apply it to the Christian, is in the millennium. It's when the Jews will be there and they are under the Messiah finally and they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Amen. 
make a joyful noise. The world will hear my voice. Jesus saves. The world still tells us daily that God is not alive, and salvation's plan is just a fairy tale. But their lies don't change the truth that Jesus died for you. And the word says his returning could happen anywhere. 